Uh, my name is Kevin Lance, and I'm the director of an 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 uh, excuse me, analytics marketing at Unchained Labs. I'll be your moderator, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So to ask questions, all you have to do is click on the Q&A button in the Zoom navigation bar at the top or bottom of the screen. Uh, when you submit your question, we do ask that you uh, avoid clicking the anonymous button. That way, we can follow up with you afterwards if we don't happen to get your question in time. We will get to as many of those as we can. And now I'd like to introduce Nellis Dennis, Product Manager for Lunatic and Stunner at Unchained Labs. Okay. Today, Nellis will walk us through our fast, low volume method for getting tighter empty pool ratio and aggregation state from AAV samples, including some case studies and some published data. Uh, and now I'll hand it over to Nellis. How are you doing today, Nellis? I am good. Excited to get this going. All right, cool. I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Okay, um, thanks again for that introduction and thank to anyone attending this talk. Dig into the details of AV Titer and Empty Full with Stunner. Not all surprises are fun. Things that unexpectedly show up floating in your lunch for sure aren't. For AV research, you don't want nasty surprises to show up suddenly either. A good way to avoid any surprises is quickly checking what you have. But current analytical techniques for AAV are either slow or slow and annoying to perform. Well, I have a surprise for you today, one of the good ones. Finding out what you have with classic techniques like qPCR, DDPCR, ELISA, AUC, or even HPLC takes way too much sample and time. So if you need to know right away what your titer is, how many full capsids you have, or if your sample is aggregated, you could be out of luck with those slower techniques. And we all know that AV is a truly complex biologic, consisting of a protein capsid assembled by three different viral proteins in a specific ratio, and then inside of them, uh, a single-stranded DNA vector. Now, when you characterize your AV, you have a lot of things going on. It's important to know the amount of protein you have, the amount of single-stranded DNA you have, if your capsid is intact, if it's all at the right size, and if there's any aggregation. Now, let's focus in on two technologies that are very powerful, but separately, they are a bit incomplete, DLS and UVVIS. Each of them tell a part of the story. DLS will get you information on your capsid titer and aggregation, but you actually don't know if there's any, anything DNA-wise inside your capsids, for example. On the other hand, UVVIS will get you total amounts of protein, total amounts of DNA, uh, you could look at their relation and get an uh, empty full ratio out of it, but you actually don't know if any of that is actually contained in capsids at a certain size. So each of these techniques get you valuable info, but neither tells you everything. So what if you combine them to get a whole story? And that is exactly what we do with Stunner. So checking out your AAV with DLS will tell you what shape your sample is in, if there's only capsids or if aggregates have started to ruin ticks. And while we're doing DLS, it also lets you figure out how much SLS intensity is just coming from your AAV capsids at the right size. And here, that's the green peak on the left, while the gray peak here is all the aggregates and larger stuff. And like I just said, UVVIS brings information on how much total protein is in your sample, how much uh, single-stranded DNA there is. And then you tell Stunner some basic information about your sample before your experiment. And Stunner will do all the heavy calculating for you and give you an empty full ratio as well. Now, to explain that a bit step-by-step, um, DLS will identify the capsids, the aggregates, and then how intense the signal is from each of these populations. So in the middle, that information helps us split up the SLS signal from a total um, intensity into the amount just coming from capsids at the same size. That will be empty and full capsids combined. And then finally, with UVVIS, we'll bring in that information about empty full ratio, plus your protein and DNA totals, um, to provide the last piece of the puzzle. 
here's that whole story again in, in the graph that's actually in the software. So starting with the left side blue bar, the full blue bar, that's all the protein in your sample that was absorbing what you vivis. That's the total amount of protein from UVVIS. And here we're looking at it, expressing it as how many possible capsids you could make with all that protein that was absorbing. Now we add in that DLS and SLS information and Stenner will split up um, the total blue bar in a dark blue and a light blue bar. The light blue bar is all the additional stuff. So free and aggregated protein in your sample. The dark blue bar will be your total capsid titer coming from uh, the three technologies combined. Similarly, on the right, we're doing the same. The total green bar is all your DNA coming from UVVIS and expressing it again as the amount of genomes you could make from all that DNA uh, into titer. And then adding in again, DLS and SLS information, we split up that signal in what is the free and aggregated DNA and what is your full capsid titer. Now, if you would um, divide the dark green by the dark blue, you would also get your percent full number um, and the software will also convert it into your empty full ratio for you. So that is how Stunner brings it all together to deliver answers on capsid titer, empty full ratio and aggregation with only two microliter of sample in less than a minute. And there's no labels, no reagents, no standards. You just use the sample you have. Now, how does all, that, all of that work? We have a special consumable, and here we can see exactly what sample loading looks like with the help of some fluorescein and a black light. Um, in two wells, you can see that we already added two microliter fluorescein. And as you can see, to load another sample, you just simply add in two microliter in that input well and the sample will just wick into the plate. So on the left, you can see those loaded samples. And on the right, you can see the samples after being measured with stunner. The two diamond shapes are the cuvettes for one sample. What this also shows is after pumping, all the sample remains in our consumable. So there's no contact between the sample and the actual instrument or the pumping system. And so there's no cross-contamination or any contamination possible. So from just those two microliters, you get information from these two technologies, UVVIS for concentration and DLS for size. And while we're doing the DLS experiment, SLS intensity data is also read. And so samples can be read from one to 96 samples at a time. Stenner's AAV Quan application will combine all the pieces of the puzzle into the full story about your AAV. Now let's look at some actual samples. Um, here we ran an AAV5 on Star. The DLS already looks pretty good. There's a very small aggregation peak, uh, but most of the signal is coming from the green capsid peak. UVVIS on your uh, next to that looks looks very normal as well. And so when we Stunner combines all that data together, it shows you that actually very little free aggregated free or aggregated protein or DNA exists. So those dark blue and dark green bars go almost all the way to the top. So for this sample specifically, we've confirmed that aggregation is not a big problem. We got total and full titers that show very little extra stuff in there. And we have an empty full ratio as well. That's a pretty good amount of data for just one minute and two microliters. So to look more into our ability to see percent full values, we took stocks of empty and full AAV9 and we mix them together at different ratios. So for each combination, 100% full, 80% full, and so on, Stunner will give you a good read uh, on the data and percent full and percent empty align well with what was expected for these samples. And the great thing is this application works for any serotype. You just tell Stunner the basics about what serotype you have what its DNA payload is, and Stunner will take care of all the rest of the calculations for you. And if you try to fake out Stunner, here's what happens. So if in this case, we measured IgG and DNA as a mixture to simulate full capsids and IgG on its own to simulate an empty capsid. Stunner knew what was there and put almost everything in free and aggregated uh, DNA or protein because there's no 
capsid peak on the DLS distribution. And so Stunner wasn't fooled. Now, if you're working with iodixinol in, in your process um, developing and purifying AVs, it's useful to know exactly how much iodixinol is in your sample and to check on the iodixinol concentration after each buffer exchange if you want to get rid of it. Stunner will help you out here as well and will detect iodixinol in your sample as low as 0.0005% by volume. Comparing to other techniques, uh, for example, for getting capsid titer, Stunner is way faster and requires less upfront work than ELISA's. Here we're, we've taken empty AV9 and full AV9 and ran dilution series on both. And we've comparing Stunner's total capsid titer versus uh, the results of a capsid ELISA. Um, you can see the results have slopes close to one and R squared values above 0.99. But more importantly, it would take hours to get this ELISA data, while Stunner has done it in less than an hour with no sample prep at all. Now, looking at genome titers in collaboration with Stride Bio, we've compared Stunner versus DDPCR results for two AAV types, single-stranded AAV on the left and self-complementary AAV on the right. The genome titer of the single-stranded AAV sample was characterized using a robust variety of DDPCR experiments to best capture the titer, while the tight error bars and starter come from a single run of triplicate samples. For the self-complementary AAV sample on the right, the optimized DDPCR protocol was used and compares very favorably to quantification by Stunner. Working with Stride Bio again, we examined how Stunner's quantification of percent full compares with AUC for a highly purified sample. AUC was read for the highest enriched percent full sample, and dilutions with empty capsids were used to create the target percent fulls. AUC and Stunner correlate very nicely, and both are highly linear, as shown by the high R squared values. But more importantly, again, AUC would require orders of magnitude more sample than stunner, and it will take way longer than the 45 seconds a single stunner read needs. Now, how could you use AAV quant? Um, for example, by assessing your AAV storage conditions, because now that's a slow process. It's made even slower when the only analytical tools you have are actually functional essays. So storage experiments are even made more complicated because some AAV serotypes are more prone to aggregation than others. So functional assays might tell you in the, in the end that you have lost infectious particles, but you won't know why. Standard's DLS shows if a sample has aggregated, so you can tell when a sample of AAV has gone bad without, 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 sorry, without wasting time on cell-based assays. Stunner's DLS intensity distributions here on AAV2 and AAV9 um, were measured after storing the samples for two weeks at four degrees. And it showed that AAV2 had peaks at much larger hydrodynamic diameters than AAV9, indicating significant aggregation. Also, the large light blue bar of the AAV2 sample shows the extent of storage-induced aggregation while the dark blue and green bars uh, dominate the graph of AV9, um, so showing that most of the sample is intact and full capsids. Quickly rejecting samples you know won't work in a cell-based assay saves time and means you can focus on the samples you know will work. Or when you're looking at buffer conditions, choosing the right buffer in formulation studies off AAV vectors is absolutely necessary especially when it comes to pH. So if the tools you use to characterize your AAV are way too slow or they take too much sample, you're limited in what you can test and you might miss out on the optimal buffer. Um, here we heated full AAV9 to 45 degrees for 25 minutes in either a neutral pH seven buffer or in an acidic pH four buffer. And you can see in the neutral buffer, you have a little bit of aggregation but in the pH4 buffer, you can see that's almost all aggregated. So with its lightning fast DLS reads, Stunner makes it easy to evaluate more buffers and stress conditions 
than traditional methods while also providing tighter results. Stunner has been helping a lot of companies with their AAVs. And to visualize that a bit as well, you can read all about it in this recent publication from Trivedi et al. They are comparing AV samples from different production methods, either by PI transfection or with herpes simplex virus infection, and using Stunner as one of the analytical techniques. Now, for genome titers, nine batches of AAV lots were read by both qPCR and Stunner for the genomic titer. Stunner and qPCR correlate very well, but Stunner reads are reagent-free, standard-free, and only take seconds. Further in the article, this genome titer will be used as the first half of the AAV's percent full. Now, total protein was also measured to get the capsid titer and to use this capsid titer as nominator to calculate the percent full further in the article. Good correlation between traditional BCA assay and Sterner to get a total protein concentration across the different production methods. But compared to BCA, Stunner uses no reagents, no standards, making, all, making it all a lot faster with less hands-on time. And finally, to get the percent full value, the researchers either divided the genome titer by the capsid titer that they got from either ELISA or BCA, or they just used Stunner's direct percent full result. The ELISA capsid titers weren't shown in the previous graph, but they were two times higher than either BCA or Stunner, driving the ELISA percent full values a lot lower. Um, overall, ELISA is a more rigorous technique, but it gives a lot more variable data. Stunner will deliver more precise results in a one-step direct measurement, while also giving you genome titer and capsid titer. So from only two microliters, Stunner combines UVVIS, DLS, and SLS data to tell the whole story about your AAV, delivering mountains of data on your sample about aggregation AAV full and empty capsid titers and an empty full ratio. And in addition to all the capabilities we've discussed so far, Stunner also meets the needs for labs working in larger scales. For these high throughput needs, the plates we use uh, for Stunner are compatible with any liquid handling robot. And we offer IQOQ services uh, as well. And Stunner software has 21 CFR part 11 compliant software add-ons with full audit trail and electronic signature capabilities. So that is how Stunner delivers label-free, standard-free, hassle-free gene therapy quant. So become in charge of everything on your plate and be the king of your kitchen. Select only the best ingredients and monitor your lunch while you're cooking it with Stunner. And we'll see if we have any questions now. We have a lot of questions that are coming in through that Q&A button. Uh, so, which again, you can find at the top or bottom of your Zoom navigation bar. Um, and like I said at the beginning, if you uh, stay away from that anonymous button, we'll be able to follow up again after the talk. Um, if you are anonymous, we can't get your contact info. Uh, so, thank you, Niles, for talking us through how easy it is to use standard to look at tighter and be full and aggregation. Uh, actually, even by Dixon all quantification too. Um, and it was really interesting to see the center comparison uh, versus those other analytical techniques. You know, remembering the AUC, uh, we saw some qPCR in there, BCA, quantification of caps at uh, level. Uh, so yeah, really, really enjoyable. Uh, let's go start tackling some of these questions. So the first one, uh, I use multiple AAV serotypes in my work. Uh, can I measure them all on the same plate this time? Uh, yeah, that's one of the nice things of having a 96 well plate based format. You can group your samples uh, per serotype and just measure them all at once. Just and then you can tell the software which group is which serotype. So yes, very easily you can put different ones on a plate. All right. Uh, what's the sensitivity of Stunner? What uh, VG per mil for those two microliter samples? Yeah, ideally uh, the sample is above one times 10 to the 12 VG per ml um, to be above our limit. 
Okay. Can stutter be used for other viral vectors? Uh, yes, we, well, this AAV quant application is very specific for AAV and, and does all that calculations for you. But in the end, uh, Stenner has that UVVIS and DLS technology. So on other samples, you can always get um, that deconvolution, as we like to call it, from your protein or, um, for example, double-stranded DNA, uh, RNA, depending on which viral vector while also getting DLS information on size and aggregation. You won't get percent full calculations in the end, but it still uh, could definitely be very useful for other viral vectors. Yeah, yeah, I understand the protein and, and uh, nucleic acid amount for sure. So uh, another question, um, one part of this we already answered, uh, the, the lower limit of, of detection and quantification. Um, but when testing samples, uh, the question is, is it recommended to look at multiple dilutions of each sample? So maybe you could just kind of briefly describe, you're at the lab bench, you have a vial, you don't know what's in it, what would you put on your star plate? How would you set that up? Uh, yeah, so um, ideally you know what serotype it is, of course, but there's no need for dilutions. As, as I said, the lower limit is 10 to the 12th. So you can just pipe it to microliter of that sample, or if you want to do it in triplicate or whatever, you, you do it three times and you just measure it and, and you'll see what you have. There's no need for any dilutions or, or calibration for that specific uh, serotype or anything. You just need to select which one it is and, and go. That's the easy part of it. Yeah, that segues nicely into uh, the next question I'm seeing here. Uh, I'm working with a customer recombinant AAV, you know, not a default uh, naturally occurring serotype. Uh, will that still work? How will that change my measurement? Yeah, so we, we have preset about 10 different AAV serotypes, but you can uh, make your own one um, by, depending on how you made it custom, of course, but if you change the amino acid uh, in the one of the proteins or you changed the ratio of those proteins or whatever, you can all make those changes in the software, save it and then use it for later usage. So you can easily create your own custom AV inside the software. Okay. Uh, let's see, there was, oh, can you send me the paper? Uh, yeah, definitely. Just reach out to us either through the website or info at nchalabs.com and we'll, and we'll send you the, the paper for sure. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what to expect uh, with Stunner when you have uh, lower purity samples? Um, yeah, so ideally, um, because we're with UVVIS, we're measuring total amounts of protein in DNA. Um, your sample is as pure as possible. Um, if that's not the case, um, metrics like percent full will be affected, but you still get a very quick and good um, information about your titer. Uh, you'll just lose a bit of the, yeah, the 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 certainty on it if it's if there's a lot of DNA or protein contamination in it. But because of we're combining all those techniques, you still get very close, or you'll get a range in which to expect your titer that will still be very very valid. But if you want the best output uh, possible, uh, of course, the more pure the sample is, the the more accurate that will be. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's something that I think you can see with all analytical instruments is more purity, better answer. And then Stunner is pretty unique in having two analytical detection systems inside of it. So they're able to kind of reinforce each other uh, in terms of robustness. Uh, let's see. So uh, there's a, a question, maybe we can combine two here. Uh, so what type of purification method is recommended for samples? Um, and then that actually you could combine it with, is there any other uh, known buffer matrix that can interfere with reading samples on Stunner? Um, not really on, on the latter part of that question, except the IDX null that I mentioned, if you really have high concentrations of IDX null, actually the moment it goes above 0.1%, um, IDX null is very absorbing in the UV and that will, cloud the UV measurement. So we would still be able to quantify um, your iodixinal on one hand and give you tighter results from DLS and SLS, but we can't double confirm them with the UVVIS or 
um, yeah, get in percent full from you. But that range that it would get from DLS SLS is still um, yeah quite tight. It's about 1.6x. Um, on purification methods, uh, that would be the main thing. Like if you're really you're using iodixonal, um, standard could be be useful to check how much and all, but um, you'll get a little less results in the end. Um, otherwise, yeah, there's no no real advice from me on on which purification method to use. I'm not an expert on that either. So, so it's fairly agnostic between like affinity chromatography and you know anti exchange. You know, so there doesn't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, and actually, I think you 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 kind of stumble on this next question during your answer, but we'll just you know go through it. Uh, do higher iodixonal concentrations interfere with DLS measurements? Uh, no, not not at all. So that's that's the good part of it. Uh, it only clouds a little bit of one of the two techniques. Uh, so your DLS SLS still works perfectly, and we don't get protein or DNA absorbance in when you have high iodixonal amounts, but you get very useful quantification of your iodixonal. So if you're trying to filter it out or anything like that, um, that's definitely valuable as well. Um, but no, uh, shortly, not, not, in a, not an issue with the LS or XLS. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'll change the topics here a little bit. So have you looked at using the stunner for non-AAV products? And there's lots more AAV questions. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, so non-AAV products such as exosomes or, or you know, LMPs. Uh, yeah, so next to this AAV quant application, we have uh, a couple of very interesting nanoparticle applications um, where you can actually use Stunner um, to read the payload of your nanoparticle without breaking them down. Um, you get the ability to specify which payload you have and um, let the instrument know what the particle compounds and all are. So it can do that deconvolution again, similar like the protein uh, single stranded DNA one, and really give you size, aggregation info, and payload quantification on uh, other nanoparticles. So let us know and we'll, we'll happily explain how all of those work. Yeah, I really like how smart Stunner can get for those, those uh, sort of liposome, acosome nanoparticle applications. It's some very cool. Uh, Cool stuff, cool math. Uh, so question, how does Stunner or the software treat um, self-complementary transgenes? So for example, uh, comparing single-stranded DNA versus uh, self-complementary or double-stranded DNA transgenes. What are the things to think about? What are the options available uh, to you with Stunner? Uh, yeah, so with every, you can you can really change a lot of things on, on uh, what your sample is, also what the DNA uh, payload is of your AV. So I, well, again, I'm not, I'm not the final expert, but if you would make custom DNA uh, that you put in there that maybe has complete different absorbance or anything like that, or uh, very short things, um, you could tell Stunner that and it will take that into account uh, to translate the absorbance into what titer would fit for your sample. Um, for the data shown, um, it was treated pretty much the same and, and it fell exactly in the expectations of Stride Bio. But uh, yeah, if you have something uh, else, you can really optimize the results uh, based on your specific sample or DNA content. Yeah, it's one of the, the inputs there for um, uh, percent double stranded. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, Al, where is this manufactured? What's the typical lead time? Uh, this is all made in Ghent in Belgium, where this was also developed. So we have a production and R&D facility here uh, in Ghent. Well, I'm here in Ghent as well. That's why I say here. Um, and our typical lead time is about one week. So uh, our production is working very hard to get uh, everything out the door quickly. Um, actually, um, uh, there's some ISO uh, uh, standards too that you can just Mentioned. Yeah, yeah, the whole facility is ISO 9001 2015 compliant. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I think we've wrapped up most of the questions there. I'm starting to see um, some repeats. So, just because the attendees are anonymous, so we'll, we'll just tackle these really quickly again. Uh, do we need to have some specific buffer to load samples or any sample prep? Uh, uh, no. So, 
No, no sample prep at all. You just load your sample you have. Um, now, if, if you would have very special buffers that also would absorb, some tweaking would be needed uh, in the software afterwards, but um, that doesn't happen that much with actual AV samples. So in that case, just reach out to us, I would say. But normally, no, there's no specific buffer needed. You just run the sample you have. That's the beauty of it. Uh, that sounds great. And, and we're at uh, time right now. So I think everyone else will uh, drive us to follow up as fast as we can with the remaining questions in the, the Q&A. Uh, thanks, everyone, who asked a question uh, here today. Uh, they were actually really interesting and made for a lot of good discussion. Uh, so. Thanks everyone for joining us live today. If you want to have a deeper conversation with our team or, you know, Nellis and I, you can always get in touch with us at info at unchainlabs.com or through our website, unchainlabs.com. Uh, we'd love to connect and talk science with you. Uh, thanks again for attending our virtual seminar and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.